Let's take a look at solving systems again using Maple, but this time let's use just the solve command and not the matrix operations. So let's re-examine these two systems. We saw in the previous podcast how we could use matrix elimination to go and find solutions to these. But just as a reminder, if you've taken a look at some of the earlier podcasts, there was a solving technique. And the basic idea of solving a, an equation was to enter them. Well, if you have a system of equations, you'd want to enter all of them in with braces around them. So I'm going to do brace uh, 2x plus 3 times y plus 4 times z equals 11. The second equation will be 6 times x minus 11 times y plus 2 times z equals 3. And the third equation is 9 times x minus 2 times y plus z equals minus 2. So I'll close those braces off, put a semicolon on, and Maple should return the three equations. So I want to just double check that I entered them correctly. Looks good. So then remember the basic idea is when you get output, you can select that output and right click on it, and you'll get a context menu. And near the bottom of this, we have the option to solve. So we can solve for variables, solve each equation for a particular variable. More often than not, we're looking to find a general solution when we have multiple equations. So I'll simply click on Solve General Solution, and it tells me that the solutions are x equals negative 21 thirty-sevenths, y equals negative 1 thirty-seventh, and z equals 113 thirty-sevenths, which is precisely what we found last time. So let's focus on this second system of equations. Remember, this is one that had infinitely many solutions, with z being a free variable. So let's start by entering these equations in. We have 7 times x plus 4 times y plus z equals 16. The second equation is 8 times x plus 5 times y plus 2 times z equals 20. And the final equation is 9 times x plus 6 times y plus 3 times z is equal to 24. So I'll close the brace off. That groups all of my equations together. And now I'll select them, right click, go down to solve, and let's find the general solution. And in this case, the general solution comes out being x is equal to x, y is equal to minus 2x plus 4, and x or z is equal to x. You notice at this time, it's written its solutions out with x being the free variable as opposed to z. But if we were to write this out with the dummy variable of alpha, we'd still have x equals alpha, y equals minus 2 alpha plus 4, and z equals alpha. And that would completely agree with our previous work. And so that's the basics of solving using the solve command.